How deep does the Breath of the Wild Iceberg go? In the following video, I'll introduce you to pretty much all the secret easter eggs and trivia facts about Breath of the Wild that have been discovered since release and believe me, that's a hell of a lot. The deeper we go below the surface, the more unknown and mysterious the individual points become. I think this is a worthy finale for Breath of the Wild and only hypes up more for all the possibilities Tears of the Kingdom will offer. You can find credits to all the info and footage in the description. Zelda U. For now, basic knowledge. The first draft for 3D follow-up to the Zelda series after Skyward Sword was presented at E3 in 2013. If you look at this trailer today, however, you quickly realize that it has nothing to do with the one that eventually became Breath of the Wild. A year later, at E3 2014, a new trailer was shown that is much closer to the final game. At that time, the game was announced for 2015 and would have accordingly become a Wii U exclusive title, as not even real facts about the so-called NX were in the room. At the end of 2014 at the Game Awards, we saw the first gameplay and also at this time Aonuma announced the game for 2015. Well, finally, it came on the 3rd of March 2017 together with a Nintendo Switch. For many, this is why it's more like the Switch Zelda instead of the Wii U Zelda that it was originally intended to be. Top down demo. In the early development phase of the game, Nintendo had programmed an 8-bit 2D prototype to test out the new mechanics. Unfortunately, Nintendo asked him to take the fan game offline shortly afterwards as he obviously had no rights to the brand. Link's gender. After the E3 2014 trailer, Zelda fans were confused. It was unclear why Link wasn't wearing his iconic green robe and looking different from previous installments. Was it even Link? In addition, Aonuma, that sly one, fueled speculation by saying that no one had claimed that the writer was Link. Theories even went so far as to question the gender of the protagonist. In the end, however, it turned out to be nothing more than a slightly different design of Link. So everything the same. Bomb arrow physics. It is no big secret that bomb arrows do not detonate in rain and explode automatically in a lava as soon as you take them out of the quiver. These realistic physics are present throughout the whole game and I'll talk about it more in other contexts. Special horses. The horses in Breath of the Wild are distinguished from each other by different characteristics. These include strength, speed, endurance and temperament. However, apart from the wild animals such as deer or bears, which you can also ride, there are five special horses that differ from all the others. These are the giant horse, which is a rather obvious reference to Ganondorf, Epona, which you can unfortunately only get through an amiibo, the stall horse, which can't be registered in stables, the horse of the kings, a grey horse that you have to catch for a side mission and the lord of the mountain, which appears on Satori Mountain on certain nights. Unfortunately, he can't be registered in stables either, but he has infinite stamina and can't die, only vanish into thin air if he suffers too much damage. Oman Ao Shrine The English name is an anagram to Aonuma, the lead developer of the Zelda series. This man is God, so to speak. Throw far. A little trick that many have overlooked to this day. When you hold items and close the inventory, you can press down on the directional pad to jump the items to drop further. This can be useful in certain situations. Rusty Octorok Rusty weapons or shields are virtually useless after a short time in the game, since they do very little damage and have low durability. However, if you throw them at the Rock Octorok, it will suck them in and clean them and spit them out again shortly after. A rusty sword, for example, can be turned into a soldier's sword, knight sword or king sword. Which one is randomly generated, but the more valuable weapons are less likely. Fire physics. The fire physics in Breath of the Wild are surprisingly accurate in some places. For example, you can build a construct out of two crates, a metal door and a campfire underneath and then roast your food on the metal door. Complicated but cool. Electricity physics. If you were already impressed by fire, you'll have to learn about electricity in Breath of the Wild. During thunderstorms, you should immediately drop your metal items, otherwise you'll be struck by lightning. Logical. The same goes for electrical attacks like the Thunder Blight. Metal shields are dropped immediately, while wooden shields take the damage without a problem. But that's not all. You can shortcut some shrines with a little trickery and even use a trick to build a kind of mousetrap that tases enemies to death. That was just a few of countless examples, you could make a whole video just on this point. Monsters catch boomerangs. The most present boomerangs in the game are probably the ones of Lizalfos, which are mainly used by most players and Lizalfos themselves as melee weapons. If you don't throw them directly at a monster, they're able to catch the boomerangs out of thin air. Not only Lizalfos, but also Bokos and Moblins. Korok seeds suck. Yes, the title says it all. At least by the description, smells a bit funny and best to admire with help knows, it should be clear what we are dealing with here. Lionels can teleport, but they rarely do, as they usually draw their bows as soon as you move away from them. Stale Lizalfos tongue. Living Lizalfos often use their tongue to attack. Their undead counterparts perform the same animation, but nothing happens with them. Kind of cute how stupid it looks. Cooking rules. 
The cooking system is extremely extensive and there is an incredible amount of math behind everything, but I wanted to at least go into the most basic knowledge. Regular food items become dishes while monster items are used to make medicine. Simply cooking an edible ingredient doubles the hearts you would get from eating it generally, but not always. Some ingredients bring a bonus with them which only comes to light through cooking. For example, the hearty radish, which yields you 2.5 hearts raw but all hearts when cooked and even packs a one-time extra heart on top. This is due to the hearty in the name and also applies to hearty durians, hearty truffles, etc. To explain how the individual levels for attack boosts work would go too far. Demon Statue In Hateno, there is the only statue that allows you to exchange heart containers for stamina containers and vice versa. When you talk to it, you'll find out that it's a former deity who was cursed by the goddess Hylia for this deal. Music References there are countless, sometimes very subtle references to all the soundtracks in the series. To name the two coolest examples, the sound that plays when new information is loaded into your Sheikah sensor strongly resembles the one that plays when you open chests in Ocarina of Time. Additionally, Epona's song can be heard in Link's whistling. Cooking Dragon Pots Dragon Pots are not only particularly valuable when it comes to rupees, but they also have an extreme advantage when cooking. Scales, claws, teeth and horn shards extend the duration of the effect of the respective recipe when cooking. The Old Man is an obvious reference to the Old Man from the first game in the series. However, it is interesting to note that in the earlier games, Link went into a cave right after the start of the game to meet the Old Man, whereas in Breath of the Wild it is the other way around. You start on the Shrine of Resurrection, a cave if you will, and meet the Old Man as soon as you enter the open world. This is most likely not a coincidence, especially not among Zelda developers. Fake Master Sword Right at the beginning of the game, before the Temple of Time, there is a rusty sword stuck in the stone in the middle of the pond. This is the first sword the player sees in almost all cases, and due to its positioning appears to experienced players to be the Master Sword, which of course it is not. However, it could be a reference to A Link to the Past, where there's also a sword in the Lost Woods that is initially mistaken for the Master Sword but turns out to be a replica. References and Easter Eggs where do I even begin? In short, there are remnants of the Lon Lon farm from Ocarina of Time, the source of the Skyward Sword's view of the sky, or symbols in Renell Street that can also be found in the Cloud Fortress. I will speak more about both Renell Street and Breath of the Wild's positioning in the Zelda timeline later. For countless other easter eggs, I'll link a video in the description. Chess animations There are different animations for opening chests, depending on how you do it. If you don't wear pants and approach a chest from the side, Link will hurt its foot. Look at him, what a fool! When you open a chest, it doesn't matter if you wear a shirt or not. Link will always hurt his hand. Land spinning Have you seen this trick before? It looks really cool, but it couldn't be simpler. Just hold down Y while riding on the master cycle or on a horse with a lance. Alternative spin attack You can use the classic spin attack that uses Orboza's Fury Bear holding down Y. To perform a faster spin attack that doesn't need to be charged, quickly rotate the left stick in a circle while pressing Y. Shield drifting The next hidden trick is shield drifting. If you press R while shield surfing, you can drift more sharply. I didn't even know this until a few months ago and was surprised at how much fun it is. Paya's birthmark For most of you, this is probably not a huge revelation, but Paya got a name from a birthmark shaped like a papaya seed. When asked about it, she stutters, as usual, and Impa answers the player's question. It's in the middle of her left butt cheek. Names of the Divine Beasts The names of the four beasts clearly refer to the characters from previous Zelda games. Three of the seven sages from Ocarina of Time, Darunia, Ruto and Naboru, are referenced as Varudania, Varuta and Vanaboris, while Medali from Wind Waker is referenced as Vemedo, Hylia Shield. The shield that, alongside the Master Sword, is probably the most iconic symbol of the Legend of Zelda franchise. In Breath of the Wild, you can find it relatively randomly in an unassuming chest after defeating a Stalnox, which I'll talk about later. However, what's also noteworthy is that like almost all other weapons in shields in the game, it can also break. In addition, it can have a bonus, such as increased durability or extra strong shield blocking, which I honestly don't think is fitting for such a sacred item. Key Swarms and Stasis if you freeze a keys to stasis, the rest of the swarm is so intimidated by your supernatural powers that it flies away. This is probably the most effective way to get rid of those pests quickly, but it's not as fun as using a bomb arrow. Talus Weaknesses In addition to the weaknesses of Igneo and Frost Taluses, which are obviously ice and fire, all types of taluses are particularly susceptible to weapons that are designed to destroy all rocks. For example, drills and iron hammers cause 4 times the damage. Lazalfos Weaknesses Fire and Ice Lozalfos instantly vanish when hit by a weapon of the opposite element. This includes hot springs for ice. Smart Inventory When you're at a cooking pot and press plus to open your inventory, you're automatically taken to the materials page. This is a classic quality of life decision by the developers that you might not notice until it's gone. Guardians on Map 
Active Guardians are marked on the map by a small blinking red dot. However, this feature is only useful when you are near them, which is rarely the case. If the Guardian has also spotted you, the mark is an additional circle around it. Updrafts from food Chili, sun shrooms and other cooked foods that give you cold resistance produce an immediate updraft when they come into contact with fire. Guardian Turrets Okay, when I heard this, I was really surprised that I never heard this before. Guardian turrets are simply upside down flying guardians, one to one. This can also be seen in their neck, which they extend before targeting the player. Shield surfing and durability. Have you ever noticed that shields don't wear out when surfing in the snow? I certainly didn't. This applies not only to snow, but also to sand, for example when sand seal surfing, all marked paths on the map and Tanagar Canyon, which shouldn't be questioned at this point. Endura carrots. If you feed your horse an Endura carrot, you get three additional boosts. Lava conducts electricity. Yes, lava conducts electricity. I'm not going to discuss whether this is physically correct or not. Monsters and bombs. Most monsters play football with bombs, making sneaking up on them much easier. However, Lynels are as usual too smart and see through your attempt, causing them to blow the bombs away with fire or jump back in surprise. Korok leaf through walls. For some reason, the wind from the Korok leaf can pass through walls. Nice to know, but probably really useful. Lazalfos field of vision. Lazalfos have a blind spot due to the position of their eyes and their posture. If you stand directly under the head, they can't see you. Ha! Stupid! Cell shading. In late August 2017, it was discovered that there is a spot on the Hylia bridge where the cell shading effect is turned off. Apparently, this was noticed early on after the game's release, but the information was probably lost in the flood of constantly new discoveries about the game. So F to the dude who must have felt pretty fooled when everyone went crazy about it half a year later. Over time, more of these spots have been discovered. For example, in a doorway in the throne room. Round bombs. Round bombs travel further than the square bombs. And I don't just mean that they logically roll further once they hit the ground, they actually fly a bit further too. Monsters and Guardians. Just like Link himself, monsters are afraid of guardians, even though they don't even attack him. Temperature error. At Death Mountain, it's so hot that the Sheikah sensor can't give an accurate temperature reading. Instead, it just says error at this spot. Interestingly, there is no transition zone where an extremely high temperature is displayed. It simply jumps from a very comfortable summer temperature to inferno. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then do it finally. Extreme temperature. This sudden increase in heat means that the highest measurable temperature is not on Death Mountain, but in the Gerudo Desert. It reaches a temperature of 131 degrees Fahrenheit there. The coldest place on the map is not Hebra Peak as expected, but a zone east of the Hebra Mountains, where temperatures can reach as low as minus 83 degrees. Lost Woods Navigating through the Lost Woods has never been easy, and I have to admit that it took me a long time to figure out how to make my way to the Master Sword. The trick here is to follow the wind, which can be recognized by the sparks from the torches. Secret Guardian Weakness Guardian Rex, Scouts and Guardian Turrets have a weakness underneath them that is marked by a blue circle. This spot next to the eye is the only one that can cause an instant death for a Guardian when hit with an ancient arrow. As I mentioned earlier, the Guardian Turrets are upside down flying Guardians that can't fly, and therefore the secret weakness of a flying Guardian is located directly on top between the three propellers. This is often easier to hit than the eye. Zone Eye the Zonai were a barbarian tribe from Farron that disappeared long before the events of Breath of the Wild. There are few facts about them, but structures scattered throughout Hyrule confirm their existence. This includes the Zonai Ruins, the Typhlo Ruins, the Thunder Plateau and the Three Labyrinths, where you can find the individual pieces of the barbarian armor. In the recently released gameplay video for TOTK, it was confirmed that the Zonai will likely play a very important role in the Breath of the Wild sequel. Horse God in the south of the Farren Prairie, there is a huge bud that is normally inhabited by great fairies. However, in this bud lives the horse god Melania, who can revive your deceased horses. His appearance is very mysterious and he tries to scaling from time to time without really being malicious. The name Melania, or in other languages Malon, is an obvious reference to Malon from Ocarina of Time. By Melania Spring, you can hear both Epona's song and the melody of the great fairies' fountains at the same time. Running with Shield a little fun fact, when your stamina is empty and you're running normally, Link moves slower than when you're holding up a shield. Ideally, you should let it get to that point and stop sprinting before your stamina runs out. Lost Sheikah Slide Tool A tool that was removed shortly before the release of the game and was even present in the E3 demo of 2016, was the ability to scan an enemy's weak points using the slate. Honestly, it wasn't a bad decision to remove it, as it was an unnecessary feature, especially since the champion's tunic automatically displays an enemy's weak point to the player. Right Stick on Map when moving your cursor on the map, you can press the right stick to reset the position to your current location. Nice, but nothing groundbreaking. Dragon Collision Did you know that dragons in rare cases can collide with the environment? You can observe this for example with Farosh when he flies through a narrow canyon. If he then crashes into a wall, there's actually a small earthquake. Throne Bokoblin 
but goblins can be thrown by moblins, which looks pretty humiliating. However, the damage caused by the thrown bokos does not depend on the color of the moblin, which would determine its throwing power, but rather on the color of the thrown boko himself. Stalmob damage. And while we're on the topic, a whole thrown stalmob causes one heart of damage, while just its skull costs 2.5 hearts. Korok puzzle. It was always clear to me, but apparently many don't know this. In Korok puzzles with a circle of stones, the missing stone is always in the direction of the gap, so you just have to walk straight ahead far enough. Timeline. I'll keep it short. Breath of the Wild takes place after all previous games in the series and, for the first time, connects the three timelines that emerged after the events of Ocarina of Time. Just like its predecessor, wild theories about timeline changes will once again be discussed on YouTube and forums. Ancient Bow vs Shield the Ancient Bow is the only bow that can shoot through shields. This also applies in reverse, so you better not let your enemies get their hands on this weapon. Swim Speed The swimming speed of Link actually depends on the equipment. You swim the fastest without any armor, but a swim speed bonus only works if you wear clothing. Satori Okay, here we go. In my observation, this is the most common but also the most beautiful easter egg in the game. If you already have a rough idea, stick around, because what I'm about to tell you probably goes beyond your current knowledge. Satori Mountain is located centrally west on the map and is inhabited by the Lord of the Mountain, whom I briefly mentioned earlier. He's a glowing creature with two owl-like faces, antlers and supernatural abilities. He's extremely elusive and can only be found in certain nights and cannot be registered in any stable, making his presence especially rare. Allegedly, the Lord of the Mountain is said to be the reincarnation of a wise man who passed away in the region. If you explore the mountain a bit more, you can even find traces of the man such as an old tent or a cooking area. In addition, there is the peculiarity of the NPC Udo who is located nearby a stable and seems to be the only one interested in the Lord of the Mountain. Another detail is that there is an incredible variety of materials and resources, including mushrooms, apples, durians and grasses to be found on Satori Mountain. By the way, Satori is the name of the dog owned by the NPC Quit and therefore the only named dog in the game. Now, for the much more interesting background of this point, Satori refers to both the experience of enlightenment in Zen Buddhism and it is also a term in Japanese mythology that describes a creature living in the mountains. The description of the creature partially matches the appearance of the Lord of the Mountain, but contradicts in other places. On the nights when the Lord of the Mountain appears, there's always a growing half moon in the sky. Satoru Iwata, the former president of Nintendo, died in July 2015 from effects of a malignant tumor. At that time, Welcome Breath of the Wild was in full swing. If you had one in one together and compare Ivata's appearance with Udo's, it becomes clear that this side story is a single tribute to the deceased president. And now, guess which moon phase was visible on December 6th, 1959, the day Ivata was born. I'm simply impressed by this absolutely honorable monument to Ivata and it really makes me happy to know that he still means so much to the team, his colleagues and the entire company Nintendo to this day. Map Easter Eggs Upon closer inspection of the map, many small details and easter eggs can be found. For example, the heart-shaped ponds in the Ebon Mountain in Ronell and on the Mount Wonneru in Farron, the skull-shaped pond inside Akala, the Draco River in Farron depicted as a snake, or the Crab Island in Elden, which, as one might expect, is shaped like a crab. Cold weather affecting Link's skin Another nice detail that the developers included into the game is that Link's skin turns red after a short time in cold weather. This is of course not groundbreaking, but such small details occur constantly throughout the game which in my opinion adds a lot of the game's charm. Monsters and Masks the purpose of masks in Breath of the Wild is not to be recognized as a threat by enemies. You can buy a specific mask for each type of enemy at Kilton's Master Shop or obtain Majora's Mask through the DLC. Only Lynels are intelligent enough to expose you despite wearing a mask, but only after a certain amount of time. This applies to both the Lynel Mask and Majora's Mask. Oh, and if you throw a rock at a Boko while wearing a mask, they'll get scared and run away, which looks pretty funny. Critical Cooking When this gong sounds after cooking, You've got lucky and your dish has received an additional bonus. This could be 3 extra hearts, an additional temporary heart, an increased effect level, 5 extra minutes of the effect or 40% of a stamina wheel, depending on the expected result. The chance for this bonus is 10%, but you can increase it to 100% in two ways. First, you cook with the star fragment, which is usually a dumb decision since they are much too valuable, or secondly, you cook during the night of a blood moon. Fish Habitats if you spawn fish through amiibos, you can see that they can survive in mud. They also swim for a short time as usual if you throw them into a hot spring or lava. Unfortunately, they then die quite brutally and animal cruelty is not cool. Yiga Weakness The Yiga have a pronounced weakness for bananas. You can see this in their hideout and in the traveling NPCs who try to sell you bananas and their reaction when you throw one at their feet. Another weakness of the Yiga is that if you attack them from behind in their hideout, they disappear on the spot instead of fighting against you as all the other enemies would do. 
champion poses. In the champion cutscenes of the expansion pass, all four of them strike their iconic poses, which are also depicted in the amiibos. And a little fact on the side, I was repeatedly amazed during the research for this video at how much content the DLC offered. I completely forgot that there were exclusive cutscenes for the DLC. If you haven't played it yet, you should definitely catch up. Rumi's conduct electricity, which is animal cruelty, but for science. You can achieve the same effect by freezing an opponent, stopping them with stasis, and shooting an electrical attack at them. It's very helpful for quickly wiping out whole hordes of monsters. Mud. The first, and to be honest, probably one of the only encounters with mud, is on the Great Plateau. If you fall into it, Link sinks immediately. However, this is only the case if you fall into it without slowing down. If you glide in carefully with a paraglider or walk in from the shore, Link sinks very slowly, and you have plenty of time to build a cryo block under him. The Typhlo Ruins. As mentioned earlier, the Typhlo Ruins are one of the relics of the Zonai tribe. They are located north of the forest of Hyrule and there is complete darkness there. Many players, including myself, thought when playing through it for the first time that we will literally bring light into darkness by solving the puzzles on site. However, that wasn't the case. And no matter what you try, there seems to be no sunlight. You just have to work your way through with help of torches, bombs, etc. Luckily, there are mods that allow you to explore them under normal lighting conditions. And the result is surprisingly beautiful. The ruins are so detailed and well built that you could explore them without any problems in the actual game. But Nintendo decided against giving players this opportunity. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom is involved in that? Link's size. Link is 5 foot 2 tall. You can use meters for distance measurement in the mini game at the Hill Tower. Secret Weapon Properties this is also a very interesting point in my opinion. In general, weapons can be easily divided into three categories. Spears, one-handed swords and two-handed swords. Shields can be worn with one-handed swords. Spears are suitable for faster attacks, while two-handed swords are swung in a circle during spinning attacks and so on. Within the categories, the individual weapons differ only in appearance and stats, such as attack power or durability. However, there are special features in each category, such as the ancient bow, which can shoot through shields. Also, for example, the drill shaft is the only spear that can break ore chunks with one single thrust, or the wind cleaver, which is a special charged attack. And one last example, only the Stone Smasher, Boulder Breaker and Savage Lionel Crusher are heavy enough to move stone objects with the Magnesis module. It's interesting to see that all weapons seem to have different weight, even if that's almost never revealed in the game. Why doesn't Link talk? Breath of the Wild is known to have broken many of the series traditions, including being the first Zelda game with voice acting. However, Link remains silent, which according to Aonuma is done to prevent discrepancies between Link and the player. Within the game, it is explained in Zelda's diary, which can be found in a room in Hyrule Castle. It says, I finally got to talk a little bit with Link. When I asked him why he's so quiet, he had a hard time answering. It turns out he's just shy. He thought he wouldn't be able to live up to everyone's expectations. I always thought he was so talented that he wouldn't have to worry about anything. But the opposite is true. Everyone has their own worries that others can't see. I was only thinking about myself and no one else. Tebazaki. In the Rito village, there is a couple named Teba and Zaki. But Tebazaki is also the name for Japanese chicken wings. <laughs> Nintendo, what were you thinking back then? Existing campfires. There's a difference between self-made campfires and those that have been built by previous travelers. If you sleep at your own campfire, it will go out when you wake up, while existing campfires, whether with or without cooking pots, will continue burning as long as it doesn't rain. Preventing Stow Monsters some skeletons are already lying on the ground and only come to life when you get too close. However, you can defeat them before they awaken by shooting the loose heads lying around. Master Saw Dialogues Did you know that there is a significant change in dialogue with the champions as well as with ordinary NPCs when you possess the Master Sword? For example, without the Master Sword, the hero from 100 years ago is mentioned, while with the Master Sword, it is clear that Link is the hero. So you have essentially gained a good standing in the social credit system. There are other reasons for dialogue changes, such as when approaching a divine beast without talking to Impa first. Electric Star and Wind Blade there is an unusual method to stop the air blast created by wind cleavers. If a Yiga attacks you with it, you can counter the attack for some reason with electric balls or the electric or thunder rod. Giant Fossils the three giant fossils are located in the southwest of Gerudo, the north of Elden, and the northwest of Fibra. In a side quest, Colossal is mentioned, which narrows down the spectrum of potential deceased creatures considerably. If we also consider that there are only three clear whales in the entire Zelda series, namely the Windfish from Link's Awakening, Levias from Skyward Sword, and the Ocean King from Phantom Hourglass, the circle is closed. Based on certain characteristics, it is even possible to assign the individual skeletons to the respective whales. Module Skip if you manage to bypass one of the four module columns in the Shrines of the Great Plateau, the price at the end of the shrine sends you back. It's interesting to see that Nintendo knew before release that there would be such freaks who would manage to bypass the necessary columns through all kinds of glitches. Fairy Special Features 
Fairies are one of the beings in the game that have to stand out again. They are the only ones in the material category that you can use instead of eat. Of course, you can eat a piece of wood for example, but at least the option for wood appears grayed out. Additionally, fairies are the only fuel for the master cycle that is not put into the tank, as they have also received their own animation here. Jomon Architecture Many design elements of the game are inspired by the Jomon period, which took place in Japan from 14,000 to 300 BC. Among them, the appearance of the shrines or the cherry oven in Akala Institute are strongly inspired by relics from this time. Lazalfos in Water Lazalfos are particularly dangerous in water because they move extremely quickly, especially compared to Link, and can even attack. If you've ever wondered whether fire Lazalfos can also spit water, yes, they spit with the same animation as normal Lazalfos, but it's not normal water. It's lava-like red water. Stale Lazalfos, on the other hand, are not able to swim and drown just like Bokos or Moblins. Well, not really. They drown, but with their burning animation? Anyway, moving on to the next point. Campfire Updraft if you light four campfires next to each other, they will produce an updraft. Strangely, even if you destroy one of the campfires, the draft will remain. Concept Art It's not unusual that not all designs for the game elements make it into the final game, as it's part of the development process. In most cases, the discarded designs are not seen by anyone outside the development team. However, in the case of Breath of the Wild, Nintendo decided to publish some sketches in form of a book and three-part video series on YouTube. These sketches include alternative, creepy guardian designs, discarded divine beast models, which I'll talk about later, and a minish village. It's a shame that many of these designs didn't make it into the game, but some of them… yeah. Weakness of tower enemies Tower enemies are these little pests that sound the alarm for the whole camp as soon as they see you. However, they have a weakness compared to their counterparts. Headshots deal double damage to normal enemies but deal 10 times the damage to tower enemies. A well-aimed shot is usually enough to get rid of these annoying creatures. Champion's abilities in the castle the champion ability is recharged 66% faster in the castle. Mifa's Blessing takes 8 minutes instead of 24, Rivali's Gale takes 2 minutes instead of 6, Daruk's Protection takes 6 minutes instead of 18, and Urboza's Fury takes 4 minutes instead of 12. If you have the DLC, you can upgrade the champion abilities to reduce the regeneration time by another 66%. In combination, this makes Mifa's Blessing 2 minutes and 40 seconds, Rivali's Gale 40 seconds, Daruk's Protection 2 minutes, and Urboza's Fury 1 minute and 20 seconds. Weapons with bonuses. As you know, weapons and shields can have a special bonus, such as increased attack power, long range or longer durability. These bonuses are randomly generated, but can be recognized before picking up the weapon or shield because they sparkle differently than regular weapons, even though the difference is hardly noticeable. However, you cannot determine what bonus the weapon will have from this. Crafting Arrows Nintendo had planned a crafting system for arrows. With this system, you could combine normal arrows with gemstones, such as sapphires, topaz, or diamonds, to create fire, ice, or electric arrows. And it seems in Tears of the Kingdom, this feature will be there. Mekar Island one of the most mysterious places on the entire map is Mekar Island, directly west of the forest of Hyrule. It is likely named after Makoros, the most important Korok from Wind Waker. However, there is no head to be found on the island, nor is there a shrine, a treasure chest or any life in the form of a fertile tree or wildlife. During the day, only a few slime spawn, and at night, an unusual number of stale monsters which can carry exceptionally strong weapons, including ice and bomb arrows. The ground is also covered in bones, and the only tree in the middle of the island under which lies an extinguished camp fire is bare. Climbing up the tree, you feel a strong wind blowing. Around the tree, there are also four small shrubs that may represent the entrance to the very first dungeon in the series, although they're not very noticeable at first glance. Another theory is that the dead tree is a monument to honor the wise Makoros, which also explains the sudden wind that occurs when you climb up the tree. The theories about Mekar Island go even deeper, and I will link a video from Zeltic in the description. Elemental Keyswings Fire eyes and electric keys have the symbol of their element on their wings. Very cool detail, I think. Varuta's tail. Have you ever noticed that Varuta's tail is designed like a water pump? It makes sense, since it's a water beast that constantly shoots water out of its trunk. Birds. The loading screen tips in Breath of the Wild are usually useless and common sense like in most games. However, there are a few exceptions, and one of them is the tip that bird flocks often mark a shrine. This is certainly helpful for blind players to find new shrines from a distance. The Master Sword has returned to the forest. With a well-known glitch, it is possible to duplicate the weapons or shields by overwhelming the game. For example, it's also possible to drop the mass assault multiple times. Strangely, when this happens, the message appears that the mass assault has returned to the forest, while it shoots straight up into the sky. This is probably an abandoned idea that the mass assault would return to the forest of Hyrule after running out of energy. It's interesting to see that this idea was implemented to the point that an animation was made for it and left in the finished game. Cooked Eggs 
cooked eggs are once again a peculiarity of the game. Most foods can be roasted on an open fire and cooked in a cooking pot, so there are only two methods for processing food. Eggs are the exception, as they can be cooked in a cooking pot, roasted on an open fire, and cooked in a hot spring. They are not the only material that reacts to hot springs, but also the only one that can be processed into three dishes. Many players don't discover this while playing privately and only find out when they encounter cooked eggs in the castle or wonder how to cook them themselves. Secret Champions Dialogues in the second DLC part, The Champion's Ballad, players are able to refight the curses that once held the Divine Beasts captive as many times as they want, and afterwards they get to hear new dialogues from the respective champions with Link, although it's more like a monologue since Link, as always, doesn't say a word. Anyway, there are a lot of these dialogues, some of which are pretty funny. Special Guardian Rex there are two types of guardian wrecks. Some of them wake up when you approach them and others that are always broken. You can examine broken guardians and find a relatively less valuable ancient part, such as a screw or a gear. However, there are a handful of special guardian corpses that possess two ancient parts. Master Sword Theft Yiga and the Yiga Hideout like to take things if the opportunity rises. If you manage to get one of them to the Master Sword, which is damn long and incredibly laborious, they'll simply steal the freaking holy band sword. It's that easy. You just took it. Fifth Divine Beast as mentioned earlier, I want to talk about the discarded Divine Beast again, because in a way, two of them made it into the game, although not in their original size. In the Ateno Institute, there is a miniature model of a whale hanging down from the ceiling, which strongly resembles the design of the four existing beasts. Apparently, not all of the Shika's plans and technologies worked out, which doesn't mean they have to be forgotten. Wildlife Weakness have you ever noticed that wildlife always dies from a headshot, no matter how weak your bow is? That's because these shots deal increased damage, similar to tower enemies. However, the multiplier is not even 10, but 10,000! The developers really wanted to make sure that you'll learn to aim. Feeding Lizalfos if you disguise yourself from Lizalfos and throw insects at them, they catch them with their tongue. If you unmask yourself afterwards, the court sea is over and they will still try to kill you. Rain and Fire we all hate rain. Rain sucks, but it has a few small advantages. For example, you're less likely to suffer fire damage if you're standing in a fire and you're immune to fire spitting Lizalfos. Still, rain sucks. ZL Swimming if you hold down ZL while swimming, it slightly changes Link's movement, which is visually noticeable and allows for more precise control. This makes sense since the button is also used to change controls while riding. However, many people don't know this. DLC Chests the DLC chests that fall from the sky are not chests until they land on the ground. They're actually stone balls that are usually found in shrines. Sniper Mode The different levels of a tower are perfect for snipers. If you draw your bow on the edge of a level, you automatically go into sniper mode, which is usually exclusive to special bows like the Ishin bow. Posing Priests in the Trial of the Sword at the end of the Trial of the Sword, in the hardest difficulty, seven monks await you. They take the poses of the seven sages from Ocarina of Time. Pretty swaggy monks! Mark and Flying Arrow Fired bomb arrows have a surface that seems large enough to place a mark on with the binoculars. It doesn't really do anything, but it's still funny since the mark stays in the air and doesn't move with the arrow. Lorland Village Lorland is strange. It's just a small coastal village full of fishermen in the southeast of Hyrule and apart from a few side quests, an inn, and probably the most annoying cork in the game, it doesn't have much to offer. But if you look closer, you'll notice that it strongly resembles Outset Island, Link's home island from Wind Waker. The arrangement of the houses, the beach, the mountains in the background, and even the height of the ladder are all suspiciously close to Wind Waker. Through a glitch that allows you to walk underwater, it was discovered that the underwater world is extremely lively and colorful. Unfortunately, it's hardly noticeable above the water surface. One last note, when it was announced in 2017 that there would be a new dungeon in the second DLC chapter, to me, it was always noticeable that it was the only real village that doesn't really offer anything. Hateno has special shops in the Institute, Terrytown has to be built up first, Kakariko already has a legendary status and is relevant through Impa, the Korok Forest obviously has the Master Sword and the Deku Tree, and the four other villages are directly related to the Divine Beasts or are hometowns to the champions. Maybe we'll see something like this in TOTK. I miss the ability to interact more with the water. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Resetting Stasis Charge Do you know that feeling when you use stasis to move an object, but you overdid it and want to reset the charge before it explodes in your face? Well, it's possible. Just shoot a Master Sword Beam at it and you can start again shortly after. The Eighth Heroine the Seven Heroines is a shrine quest that takes place in the eastern ruins near the giant statues. They are arranged in a circle, but there is one spot missing where the Eighth Warrior should stand. This heroine exists, but she's located much further away in Gerudo Highlands, and her sword is also further away. Her inscription is also mirrored compared to the other Seven Heroines. Otherwise, they are exactly identical. There are also eight statues arranged in a circle at the entrance to the Yiga Hideout, which strongly resemble the heroines. Was the Eighth Warrior deliberately separated from the others to be banished? 
Although there's a side quest about the 8th warrior, her story is never explained. And speaking of which, I will talk more about how the Yiga are related to the Gerudo later. NPCs are Mies. Do some NPCs seem familiar to you in a strange way? That's because the NPCs are actually Mies that were converted into a different art style for Breath of the Wild. This theory has been around for a long time and was finally confirmed about two years ago. Modders were able to replicate the same parameters and attributes used for the designs and were even able to import their own Mies into the game. Mass Assault Beams Over Distance the mass assault beams are capable of cutting down trees. The special thing about this is that it only works up to a certain distance, as the beams would otherwise probably lose too much strength or power, wear and tear from the mass assault beams. Let's stick with the same topic. The mass assault also consumes stamina while shooting beams. However, this only applies to the regular assault with a strength of 30. The upgraded one with a strength of 60 does not consume any stamina and can shoot beams endlessly. Slow motion in inventory. If you dodge an enemy attack in the right time frame, slow motion will occur, which gives you the opportunity to counter the enemy with a few strikes. If you open the inventory during this slow motion, you will notice that it also works here. This is especially noticeable if you have equipped the Ancient Greatsword, as the individual parts of the chainsaw now move noticeably slower. A blue pumpkin? If you pull out a bomb in front of NPCs, they understandably react with shock and fear. But it would have been too easy for the development team to always show the same reaction. That's why there's a fanatical pumpkin farmer in Kakariko whose response to your bomb threat is a confused A BLUE PUMPKIN?! No matter how many times Nintendo breaks such quirks, it just never gets boring and I'm always excited that so much attention to detail was invested. Special feature of Daruk's shield the Rook shield protects you from almost all possible dangers, with a few exceptions. If you jump on thorns with it, you'll bounce off without taking damage, but it won't wear down. It also protects you from the explosion of fire slimes, but not from ice or electrical slimes. Malice Eyes and Bees Bees and the eyes that guide Ganon's malice are both enemies by definition. Their own weapons will always break upon impact, but strangely not when hitting these two. Apple under Kakariko Bridge Under a bridge in Kakariko, there's an apple that a resident probably hid there. E3 Demo Remnants in the E3 demo, there were some invisible walls and barriers that greatly restricted the world. These were, of course, deactivated for the final release, but they still exist in the game in the same places. There are even some remnants that were apparently forgotten when removed, such as high up around the tower of the plateau, which can be quite annoying if you're trying to use wind bombs to fly away from there. Hylian and Sheikah language Throughout the game, there are various symbols that appear. These are either Hylian or part of the Sheikah language, which can be translated using Roman characters. When translated, they often describe the object they are associated with, such as dungeon at the entrances of shrines, plate on metal plates, or goal under monk's pedestal. I find the meaning behind the text on the pillars which load data onto your slate particularly cool. It says, master using it and you can have this, which is the exact wording from the old man in The Legend of Zelda for the NES. It's also clear that the developers had some fun with it in certain places. In the open diaries, for example, it says, April 1st, today was a very hot and sunny day. I went to school. This diary is a very important document. And on the next page, April 2nd, yesterday was April Fool's Day. Everything I wrote was false. That's all for now. Until tomorrow. Shika eyes. If you look at a tower from a certain angle from below, you can see a Shika eye. The developers had a lot of fun hiding these details in every corner of the game, didn't they? Blue fire and NPCs. Each inhabitant of Ateno reacts differently when you hold a burning weapon with a blue fire in front of them to talk to them. Some residents even give a small gift and children gather around Link fascinated. Very nice attention to detail once again. Alternatives to Lightbow the game almost forces the player to use the light bow against the demon beast Ganon. However, surprisingly, you don't have to. While the beast is immune to normal arrows, it is not immune to the shots from the Twilight Bow or Boza's Fury, Master Soul Beams or Ancient Arrows, regardless of which bow you use. Vilia Vilia is the male Hylian who disguises himself as a female Gerudo. His face is always veiled, but it is possible to expose his disguise using Rivali's Gale. The Terrytown Bell In the middle of Terrytown, there is a bell above a statue of the goddess. It is not the only bell in the game, but it is the only one the player can interact with. It reacts to the Magnesis module and a fitting sound even plays when you hit it with arrows. Special Stones when you lift a stone in some cases, there might be an insect or a gemstone hidden underneath. In the game, there are a handful of stones that are guaranteed to hide a certain animal or gemstone. These include the stone near the old man at the beginning of the game, which likely serves to reward new players for exploring, as well as a stone in Satori Mountain, where else, under which a diamond is hidden. So, it's worth checking these after every blood moon. Ancient Weapons and Cryo did you know that ancient weapons like the ancient sword, ancient arrows or even bomb can destroy your cryo blocks? The same goes for blue fire in any form. Weak monsters in master mode. 
You might have assumed otherwise, but in the master mode, there is a red Boko, a red Moblin, a green Lizalfos, a red Lionel, and a red Hinox. Although all enemies in master mode are supposed to be one level stronger, these exceptions exist. This is likely just to complete the handbook. Campfire Way A campfire is actually heavier than the wood alone. Don't question it, it really doesn't make sense. Sleepy NPCs if Blink swings a weapon near NPCs, they will recoil and react in fear or anger. However, if he first wakes up a sleeping NPC and then threatens him with a weapon, they will show no reaction, probably because they are still too tired to understand what's going on. Choo Choo Weakness Unlike most enemies, Choo Choo's do not have a distinguishable head from the rest of their body, so headshots are not possible. However, like other monsters, they do have a weakness, and that is their eyes. Apple Tree in the Lost Woods the Lost Woods are creepy and always have been. In Breath of the Wild, they are characterized by the bare trees and dense fog. At a certain point in the Lost Woods, however, a normal apple tree can be seen in the distance, complete with a beehive hanging from it. And as if that weren't strange enough, there is no way to reach this apple tree. No matter from what angle you approach it, you will be swallowed up by the fog and reset to the last checkpoint. Very mysterious. Poison Water one of the many loading screen info cards discussed poisoned water, which you never encounter in the game. Modders have found that this type of water is indeed present in the game but was never used, so you can guess what they did. The poisoned water is purple and causes half a heart of damage every half seconds to the player, but only about 0.3 hearts of damage per half a second to enemies. Cryo blocks cannot be built on it either. Fire Raid on Horses both differ in their fire rate, which is the time it takes to shoot a new arrow. There are no visible values for this, but you can calculate the rate relatively easily yourself. However, on horses, the fire rate is the same for every bow, which is a plus for some bows and a minus for others. It is not logically explainable, so I suspect that it is an unintended mistake. Stalnox eyes Stalnoxes always grab the first eye they can get. It may sound logical, but figuring out took some player a lot of time. Stalnox in the dungeon Let's stick with the Stalnoxes. At the beginning of the video, I hinted that I would talk about the Stalnox in the castle dungeon again, which protects the Hylian shield. Have you ever wondered why he's there, why he's not alive anymore, and most importantly, how this giant managed to get into the room? No? Okay, I'll explain it to you anyway. If you look closely at this room in the dungeon, you'll notice a round hole in the ceiling above the Stalnox, which is now bricked up, and torn chains hanging from it. He was probably captured as a living Hynox before the Calamity Ganon, led into the dungeon through lowering the platform in the middle of the room, and then kept captive for research. But since the takeover of Ganon, no one was ever there to feed the Hinox, so he starved to death. After the Hinox, leave a like out of pity now. Stal monsters and eating. Stal enemies are not interested in food, even if you put it in front of them. That makes sense. Skeletons rarely get hungry. However, Stal horses don't care and break this rule. Lionel at Gerudo Summit. The Lionel in Gerudo is the only one that shoots normal arrows instead of elemental one. This makes it much less dangerous. What a clown! Enemies can parry. Enemies can parry attacks with a shield, just like the player. While this causes a brief slow motion effect in the first person view, it is skipped in the third person view, making it easier to miss. However, the sound that plays is the same. Princess Mononoke as mentioned earlier, it was the E3 2014 trailer that first presented Breath of the Wild as it more or less ended up looking. But did you know that the trailer and many elements in Breath of the Wild are heavily inspired by the 1997 anime film Princess Mononoke? These include things like the Guardians, the Lord of the Mountain, and riding wild animals like deer. There are so much more videos on this topic and I don't have much to say about it since I haven't seen the anime, but I did notice something during my research. In Princess Mononoke, there is a character named Prince Ashitaka who is cursed and has his right arm controlled. This strongly reminds me of what we have seen so far of Link and TOTK. Perhaps this is a far-fetched connection, but we will soon find out what really happened to Link. Buried Apple Pretty random, but at the Orsett Bridge in the center of Hyrule, there is an apple buried underground. Link can still pick it up as normal if he stands directly in front of it or above it. Giant Horse Reflects if an Octorog dares to attack you and your giant horse, you don't have to take any action because your horse alone is savage enough to counter the attack without further ado. Backflips can be harmful. I didn't believe it myself until I tried, but backflips can be harmful. However, this only applies if you perform a backflip in slow motion to dodge an attack from another opponent. The setup for this must be relatively precise and the effort is hardly worth it. But hey, it works! Octorog Airships and Stasis the Master Mode exclusive Octorok airships often consist of several wooden surfaces connected by beams. These can be frozen with stasis, where they are considered as one object, even if parts of the airship have already been separated from the entire structure. If you shoot them with arrows while they are suspended, the force vectors of the accumulating kinetic energy point in various directions. And if you haven't paid attention in physics, here's a simplified explanation. The airship shoots off in all directions as soon as the stasis effect wears off. It looks very surreal, and I don't think the developers intended it to be that way. Mysterious Electric Arrow 
In the Gerudo Desert, near the southern oasis, there is a single electric arrow in the sky. However, it is not just at eye level, but so high in the sky that no one has been able to reach it for years. It's so absurd that there's probably nothing behind it, except the developers forgot to remove it. Anyway, it wasn't until January of last year that someone managed to gain enough height through glitches to collect the arrow, and it was definitely not worth the effort. Spider's Nest the Lonehru Promenade is only remembered by most people because of a shrine under a waterfall, a memory or perhaps a lionel right next to a Hinox. Only a few pay greater attention to the ruins and their history, but that's where I come in. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, symbols from Skyward Sword Skyloft can be found here, but that's not all. Many elements are the same as in and in front of the Forgotten Temple, which is located in a completely different part of the game. The buildings do not come from the Zonai, but from other ancient Hylian people. In the book, Breath of the Wild Masterworks, the developers provide deeper insights into the thinking behind this inconspicuous place. Originally, during the development phase, Lonehru Promenade was known as the Spider's Nest, but why is not explained. Fortunately, there are no spiders in Breath of the Wild. The next thing that comes close to spiders is probably Ganon in his first form, or Guardians. In some Zelda games such as Skyward Sword, there are spider monsters with a skull pattern on their bodies, the Skultulas. Perhaps it was planned to integrate these into Breath of the Wild, but obviously nothing came of it. Another theory that I support myself plays with the idea that the Spider's Nest was only named that after the Lonehru Promenade was destroyed. The Forgotten Temple is inhabited by numerous guardians, which were probably also responsible for its ruin, which speaks against the fact that the same thing happened to the Promenade, only that these guardians are no longer in sight, as they came out differently than in the Forgotten Temple. The only reason why such large groups of guardians inhabit both the Forgotten Temple and the basement of the labyrinth is, of course, that they cannot get out without external help. Chimney on Link's House From the Chimney on Link's House, you can see all four divine beasts. Coincidence? I don't think so. Tree at the Northern Labyrinth the Northern Labyrinth is located in the snowy Hebra, a place where it's too cold for most plants. The few trees that withstand the cold are also full of snow and stylistically blend well with the surroundings. However, there is one exception, a normal green flowering tree directly south of the labyrinth. It is unclear how it withstands the icy temperatures or whether it is intentional. Wiz robe without a cloak did you know what a wiz robe looks like under their cloak? Well, now you know. This disturbing artwork can also be found in the Masterworks book, Zelda's Lullaby in the Throne Room. You've probably noticed the metallic triforce in the throne room, but there's more to it. The lines that surround it are curved musical staffs, and the notes on them from Zelda's Lullaby. Besides that, the entire object is a reference to the time portal from Skyward Sword. Bomb barrels. You may have noticed that bomb barrels don't always do the same amount of damage when they explode in your radius. This is because there are three different types of bomb barrels that vary in strength, but they all look the same. Final Room of the Sword Trial In the final room of the Sword Trial, most people don't pay attention to the room itself and just want to finish the challenge quickly, which is understandable. However, on the wall of the circular room, many places in Hyrule can be recognized, including prominent mountains, divine beasts, or the Deku Tree. Out of Bounds as in almost every game, it is possible to explore areas outside the game's intended boundaries, at the latest through hacking. In Breath of the Wild, in all directions at the end of the map, players will encounter an invisible wall that prevents them from leaving Hyrule. Here are some interesting things that have been discovered while leaving the intended areas. Both the Gerudo Tower and the hole behind the Yiga Hideout are not endlessly deep, but have a bottom far below the map. Under the entire map is a single body of water, which is pulled up for rivers, ponds, lakes and seas. Therefore, every body of water is indirectly connected. At the top of a tower in the castle, there is a small door that cannot be opened. However, behind it is not just a wall, but actually a small room, but without any furnishings. It's also interesting that the map seems to be mirrored in the south, because if you manage to leave Gerudo Desert in the south, you can see a fourth labyrinth in the distance, which logically is only a reflection of the southern labyrinth. Weapons Prices Data miners have found out that all weapons and shields have rupee prices for buying and selling. Apparently, it was originally planned to trade not only materials and clothing, but also combat items. In the final game, there are only selected places where you can buy weapons but not sell them, including Kilton's Monster Shop or the Hylian Tunic Shop, which offers more of a crafting tool than a traditional shop. Demon Beast Ganon's Beams in Ganon's second form as a demon beast, he actually only has one real attack. Dodging this laser is not particularly difficult, but it causes a lot of damage. However, something makes this laser exceptional, as game files indicate that it only deals half as much damage to horses. The reason is likely to prevent the player from easily getting their horse die in this epic finale. Secret Master Sword 
In trailers and cutscenes, a rusty, worn Master Sword is shown, which never appears in the actual game. However, since many cutscenes are not rendered, but run live, all items and characters contained therein are also somewhere in the game files. The reason for this are, on the one hand, that Link wears different outfits in the cutscenes, and, on the other hand, that it requires less storage space to play a scripted animation instead of a rendered video file. Now, regarding the secret Master Sword, it is also in the game files and can be obtained in Link's inventory with some trickery. It has a strength of 1, and an old sound when Wrong, which was revised during development. Stone in Martha's Bay. In the middle of Martha's Bay, at the southernmost end of Farron and also on the map, there is a stone underwater. One might think that it is nothing special, but this one stone on the seabed is so far away that it stands out. In fact, it is the only stone that is underwater. Apart from a few lazalfos in the water and some rocks on the shore, there is nothing else in the bay. I don't care if you're still bored of the stone, but since I learned of its existence, I haven't been able to sleep peacefully. I'm plagued by the question of what the developers wanted to achieve with it for weeks. Is there more to it? Are we not ready for the deeper meaning and how the hell how did this damn stone get here? GSC. GSC stands for Gerudo Secret Club, the password protected shop in Gerudo Town where you can buy the Radiant and Desert Vo sets. It is the only place in Gerudo Town where Link doesn't have to dress as a woman. Since the seller has no problem with a Vo, a man gaining access to the town in his presence. But not only that, she can see through Link's women's clothing right away and has the only shop in town that offers clothing for men, although that is illegal. She mentions that despite the ban on men, there's an unexpectedly high demand. That's strange, cause who could she be talking about? A male Gerudo is only born every hundred years. Is, and the only one ever to appear in the series is Ganondorf, who in Breath of the Wild exists only as Ganon. Also, none of the Orni, Zora, Gorons or Hylians appear in any of the armor in the game. The most obvious is that the other customers are Yiga. That sounds absurd at first, but let me explain. The Yiga are the only people who live with the Gerudo in the desert. Ganondorf is a Gerudo, and the Yiga are enemies of the Sheikah, who serve Ganon, a Gerudo. Also, their people are only male. They wear skin-tight full-body suits that resemble the Radiant set. The fact that the Yiga had already gained access to Gerudo Town in the past is proven solely by the fact that they stole the Thunder Helm. There are also damn ninjas who can teleport and shapeshift, so it's not absurd that they shop for their clothing in a secret store. Of course, this can't be discovered because the Yiga are cunning and threatening, but maybe you should just smell quick money and get into this immoral business. Who knows? Picked underscore 013. To regain Link's memories of the events that occurred 100 years ago, there are 13 locations marked by a golden glow on the map where Link has a memory. To make it easier to find these locations, Impa transfers 12 images of the surroundings to the Sheikah Slate. After these 12 images, there is one final memory that does not appear at the Sheikah Slate, but instead hangs in form of a painting in Impa's house. Images of the 13 locations can be found in the game as JPEG files under the name picked 0000 to picked underscore 012, but there is also a 14th image file, namely picked underscore 013. This shows Link next to Zelda in front of the Shrine of Resurrection while Link adopts a strange pose reminiscent of the Yiga. Zelda wears her blue dress in this image and Link wears his champion's tunic, which looks slightly different in the finished game. In all other flashbacks, Link wears his blue tunic, which makes sense since you only obtain the champion's tunic after acquiring all 120 shrines. Is Pick 13 a preview image for a cutscene that was supposed to take place after defeating Ganon but never made it into the final game? Either that, all the developers simply played a joke. Mask Yosha. Mask Yosha is the priest at the end of the last dungeon and also the final boss. His attack pattern is extremely versatile. He is a laser-like guardian, can teleport and is also able to transform his form by cloning or enlarging himself. The Yiga are especially known for the latter. They are former Sheikah who rebelled against the royal family to serve Ganon. When the Yiga teleport, Hylian characters appear in a circle around them, while Mask Yosha's are Sheikah characters. Both can be read clockwise as the letters R, P, T, S, K, J, R, Z, Z, which represents the nine syllables. Rin, Pyo, To, Sha, Kai, Jin, Retsu, Zai, and Zen, which make up the Kuji In, a form of meditation. It was previously practiced in ninjutsu and other martial arts and still exists today. The papers with the Shika Ai that appear during the teleportation of the Yiga or Mask Yosha are also imported from the real world and are probably Ofuda. Ofuda are talismans that are supposed to protect against injuries. They also hang on the walls of the Yiga hideout. Another similarity between the Yiga and the final priest is their noticeable weakness for bananas. This is probably because Cook sought bananas increase their attack power. The reason why modern Shika do not have this weakness, or at least not anymore, is probably because they no longer have to fight actively, unlike their ancestors and their enemies. They settle in Kakariko and are hardly used anymore. Apart from that, sword bananas are mainly found in Farin, which is far away from Kakariko. Maybe it was a deliberate decision to distance themselves from them further. Maskyosha, on the other hand, has lived underground for half an eternity, has not been aware of external events, and at first glance resembles the Yiga, even though he embodies the absolute opposite and fights for the Shika. He's probably the last active fighting Shika in Hyrule. Great Plateau. 
there are countless theories about the Great Plateau, one of which states that its position has been exchanged with the location of the Forest of Hyrule. There are several indicators for this, for example that both regions have a similar size and shape, that there is a dense fog in both places, or that the map of Breath of the Wild would be much closer to that of Ocarina of Time if there was a change in position. It's also noticeable that both contain four shrines, and the point where all four meet in the middle is the Citadel of Time in case of the Great Plateau and the Master Sword in the case of the Forest. As you probably know, the Master Sword in OOT was in the Citadel of Time. If you want to learn more about this theory, I recommend watching the video on this topic by Nintendo Black Crisis, which I'll also link in the description. Additionally, I find it interesting that the plateau seems to have an entrance, but is blocked from the lower side by a hill and from above by a body of water. I never noticed this in over 6 years, but logically, there must be a way to enter the plateau without teleporting onto it. Morse code. Now we come to the extremely dark and final point of the video. I have to say that I've always found the music that plays in the Divine Beast to be very unsettling, but the most oppressive thing about it is so subtle that probably no one notices it just like that. Because in each of the four Divine Beast music pieces there is a faint, regular beeping to be heard, always in the same pattern, three short, three long and three more short. I think you know what that stands for. It's the international morse code for SOS. And this faint call for help was the last thing the champions uttered before they lost their lives in the fight against Ganon. But that's that's not all. In Vamedo it's a little different, because here the Morse code can be only heard after a while, while it sounds right at the beginning in the other three beasts. This is not a coincidence, but perfectly reflects the character of the champion Rivali, because throughout the entire game he's known for his arrogant and self-centered ways. He was too proud to ask for help and thought he could defeat Ganon alone. Only when he realized that things were not looking good for him, he admitted that he could not defeat Ganon alone and ask for help. In my opinion, Zelda Breath of the Wild is the best video game that has ever existed. The team behind it has delivered in all fronts and created a deeply profound masterpiece in so many different aspects, like I've never seen before. I'm extremely sure that I've forgotten some important points that would have deserved a place in this iceberg, and I'm almost equally sure that there's still a whole lot to discover about this game that no one has ever noticed until today, simply because it's so damn huge. Whether it's the gigantic and vast open world, the freedom giving to the player in solving tasks, or the hidden stories like that of the Satori Mountain, the game is simply unique and has never disappointed me despite my extremely high expectations. The bar is set incredibly high and I'm curious whether the successor will be able to live up to it, but no one can know that yet. Guys, thank you for watching this monster project, if you want to support me for my work you can subscribe to me for free, like the video and share it with friends who might also be interested. For criticism just write a comment, I'll read them all as always. Thank you and see you next time.